The gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairwoman Waters. Um, and thank you all for joining us here today. I know it's been a really long day. Um, the purpose of this hearing is to review globally systemic banks 10 years after the 2008 financial crisis. So just know that while I'm tough, it's not personal, okay? Um, I was really going back and reviewing uh, these last 10 years, and I have concerns about how much things have really changed. I did an assessment, and year by year, let's go back uh, to 2013. 2013, uh, Chase had to pay out $720 million in fines to the Fed, FE, SEC, and UK Financial Conduct Authority for failing to oversee its trading pra practices, including what is known as the London Whale. 2014, Bank of America agreed to a $16.5 billion settlement to the DOJ and others for misconduct related to uh, mortgage-backed securities and a $20 million penalty with another $727 million in consumer relief. 2015, Bank of New York Mellon, $714 million to settle claims that it defrauded customers when it promised to exchange at best rates for customers, but instead used the worst rates and pocketed the difference. 2016, Wells Fargo entered into consent orders for fraudulently opening millions of accounts in customers' names without their consent or knowledge. 2017, State Street seven months after installing the fearless girl statue paid five million dollars in back pay and interest after a department of labor audit found that state street was systematically paying female employees less than their male counterparts and black executives less than similar, similarly situated white executives uh, my colleague uh, from illinois highlighted uh, some troubling connections between morgan stanley and puerto rico's illegal debt load 2018 Goldman Sachs face, began facing lawsuits from DOJ, the Fed, foreign governments in relation to funding bribes and kickbacks to foreign officials relating to raising funds for Malaysia's sovereign wealth fund. Timothy, Timothy Leisner, the Goldman uh, Southeast Asia executive, pled guilty to various charges and forfeited $43 million. And just last month, March of 2019, Citibank fined for $25 million for violating the Fair Housing Act for failing to offer benefits to all eligible customers, namely on the basis of race, national origin, and sex. And so I'm concerned here about the potentiality uh, of fines related to misconduct just being incorporated as the cost of doing business. And Mr. Corbett, is a cost-benefit analysis that weighs the cost of government fines versus the potential financial upside of potentially breaking the law. Does that factor into controversial deci decision making around misconduct um, at your bank? Absolutely not. Okay, in my district, I represent Rikers Island. Um, I represent kids that go to jail for jumping a turnstile because they can't afford a Metro card. Do you think that more folks should have gone to jail for, the, for their role in a financial crisis that uh, led to 7.8 million foreclosures in the 10 years between 2007 and 2016, Mr. Diamond? I don't think people should go to jail for jumping a subway. I think we put too many people into jail. And I think if people broke the law, they should go to jail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you think that the failure to, to hold more people accountable for the 2008 crisis as a failure of our legal system? Look, you have to talk to a lot of legal experts about why more people didn't, mm -hmm. uh, whether they deserve to, whether they broke the law, what's intent, what's not intent, uh, but you have to talk to legal experts about that. On that note, uh, Mr. Diamond, I do want to commend you for your decision and Chase's decision to pull out of financing for private prisons. Um, I think that that has led to some changes, particularly with Wells Fargo as well, um, in, in making sure that we begin to divest from some of the troubling things that we're seeing, particularly when it comes to the caging of children at our border. I have one last question with respect to this more future looking. Recently, the Federal Reserve Board decided not to activate the countercyclical capital buffer this year, uh, but banks are very profitable, making a record $237 billion in profits last year. Mr. Corbett, is this not the best time for banks 
is, it, is this not the best time for the Fed to build more capital so that they can be in a better position to weather a future downturn? As I stated earlier, that today, by the Fed's own measurement, they're measuring 23 or 24 different types of capital. Um, what we've said is um, we're welcome to a holistic approach of which the counter-cyclical buffer is one, but rather than pick individual, let's look holistically at what the right solution is. The gentleman from New York, Mr. Zeldin, is recognized for